No. And another guy's like, you sound like a neuro-linguistic programming connoisseur. Nope. What do you mean, no? Um, <laughs> what do you mean? Like I read about it? Like I had to watch a video? No. I'm being taught by the Spirit from the ground up. So I don't need to memorize that, you see. Somebody referred me to a Richard Bandler video. That was funny. I only needed to watch it for a minute just to see what he was calling it. Oh, you're calling it neuro-linguistic programming? Okay, so that's what you call it. And I know he's aware of some of this. He's talking about the submodalities of speech and how they go to the subconscious mind and everything. But see, his intention is quite different. See, in his speech, in his lecture, he has uh, hypnotherapists and psychologists all there to learn NLP, right? They're not learning a thing. I know they're not, even though he's teaching it to them. How do I know that? Because he's programming their mind throughout the entire lecture. It's ridiculous. And there's a lot of things that, well... I'll have to show you. I guess maybe I can put a clip of it for you. Uh, there's one sequence where he literally programs people with NLP to resent God. Because I have a tendency to talk real quickly. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to point out to you right out of the gate is that the most unconscious uh, process that there actually is is the understanding of language itself that even if a language is your native language, you don't know how you understand the sentences. It's one of these marvelous pieces of programming that goes on, that people always act as if language is a conscious process. But actually the words flow right in, and you have a built-in genetic mechanism that processes meaning at the unconscious level. So your choice is either to raise your hand or to just go unconscious. Okay, so if you pay attention to the dual meaning there, what he's trying to tell you is that there is no consequence. This is what he's talking about. He's using dual meaning with gestures, and he's a master at this. That's why it goes unnoticed to most people. Pay attention to his dual meaning. You guys like that? <laughs> now, open your eyes and hold that thought, because the increase that you made in your own pleasure is called running your own brain. This is what it feels like to be in charge of your brain. It means you can feel good. Now, it means you, when you feel bad, you just turn the brightness down, push the pictures away. See, how many of you, like, you know, have thought about you're going to go do something and you think it's going to be unpleasant? And so you suffer and suffer and suffer, and when you get there, the place is closed. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Right? It's like, why make yourself suffer? How many of you have thought about doing something and you think it's going to be unpleasant and you suffer and suffer and suffer and when you get there, the place is closed? That's telling you that you're not going to go to hell. There is no hell. Why suffer? There is no consequence to deviating from the creative spirit. You suffer and you suffer and you get there and the place is closed. There are things in your subconscious mind that you're unaware of. When he says those things, it helps to implant subconscious beliefs that may or may not surface in the moment. This in and of itself won't do much, but as you put things together in progression, it starts to shape the mind. But yet, we've been trained, we've grown and built patterns that this is what we're supposed to do. You're absolved. You don't have to do that anymore. When you learn that you could sit right here and increase the pleasure that you got from something you enjoyed. If you notice, he's really talking about pleasure. Now remember, mind control is also highly based upon pleasure and pain. Seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. The idea of good offsetting bad. The binary bipolar consciousness bouncing you back and forth in your mind between good and bad like a tennis ball in a tennis match. So he's really trying to install the idea of good and bad and consequences for doing anything good and that bad would have the pleasure involved with it. Do you understand? See to me like the kinds of things that are worthwhile to take NLP to do is like if you, how many of you are in a relationship but 
you know, whether you're married or not, I don't care. But I mean, you know, you're a couple of some kind, right? Wouldn't it be nice if every time you saw the person, in, the, the other person in the couple, the feelings that you had were just totally outside? I mean, you just lit up like a light bulb and enjoyed it. Isn't that, see, that's to me is worthwhile change. That's the kind of stuff I'm after. Not that people go, well, sometimes I feel bad about this. You know, and I stop it. You know, to me, what I want to do is take all the good feelings and be able to really amplify them. Now, what the steps we're going to go through is the first thing I want to do is to sort out this thing about elicitation. Come on in. Why don't you come with me, little girl, on a magic carpet ride? <laughs> now, I always love it when the guy comes in to change the coffee and stuff. I like to throw embedded commands at them. Next time one comes in, you, you watch. See what we can get them to do. <laughs> and it really freezes <laughs> that frame in that picture. It's enough to, it's like talking about fall and a trip you're going to go on. It's nice that there's a set of stairs. Um, it's a hobby. Everybody has to have one. <laughs> Learn your language patterns. Now, what I want you to do is... And you guys didn't burn bees when you were little kids and you don't enjoy spraying ants? Mm-hmm. You guys aren't the ones going to horror films? He follows up and reinforces it. And you guys didn't burn bees when you were kids and enjoy spraying ants? Enjoy. You see how he sets it up with pleasure first, and now he talks about the enjoyment of killing. Talking about that fall and that trip you're going to go on to hell. It's nice that there's a set of stairs. People are laughing because they're just trying to be social in the class. They have no idea what he's doing to their subconscious mind. You aren't the ones going to horror films. First of all, there's a certain group that writes these horror films and floods you with them and gives you subconscious NLP and subliminal messages to think in your mind that you want to go see them. He's placing the blame upon you and your lack of judgment because you have no idea of the sublime control of your mind. He's just programming that as he goes. He's very good. You have to take them seriously. See, when I was in college, you guys will get a kick out of this. The only course I ever flunked was Psych 1A. And I got a D in speech. And so I, what do I end up doing? Lecturing the psychologists. Just shows you about uh, American college education. Now, the thing... My belief, my belief system says, oh yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you think your God is tough. <laughs> now, the thing is, is that is that for me, once you start to take and, and learn how to switch submodalities... Oh yeah? So you think your God is tough? Your God? That's a demon speaking through him. That's exactly what's happening. And this is just a few clips of this guy. I highly suggest you download the Hypnosis Party Pack where there's lots of his videos in there. He's always referring to his affinity for demonic mentality. Of course, they never say it directly, but they often will refer to it. So you think your God is tough. What does that mean? We decided that what we should do is to amplify the person. So that, that what we do now is we build a different kind of an anchor. The kind of an anchor that we build. You want to come up here and help me? Would you come, come on up here? Yeah, you have that confused look on your face that always makes a good demonstration subject. <laughs> <laughs> the unsuspecting soul. Just... Sit down and trust me. <laughs> yeah, and put your, uncross your legs here. This, you don't have to be ladylike right now. I need your leg. Okay. The unsuspecting soul, not person.